بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Prove this love for Allah and His Messenger through actions. It's not enough to just say, I love the Messenger when I don't know anything about him. I was busy watching a lot of our children over a period of time. And to be honest, the footballers who know how to kick a ball from one side of the pitch to the other, when our children go crazy about them, so crazy that they wouldn't mind missing their salah, some of us are the same. They wouldn't mind ignoring all the religious instructions or all the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is saying do not participate in sport, do not take part, do not show an interest. All we are saying is do not go beyond the limits when it comes to that. Understand that no matter how much you loved football and no matter how much you knew how to kick the ball in your grave, no question. They don't say, Ma, you know, Ma dinuka or Man rabbuka and so on, you know, the questions that are going to be asked in the grave, who is your Rabb, who, what is your deen, who is Muhammad, and so on, may peace be upon him. They're never going to ask you, how well did you play football? Never. Where is the ball that you scored the final goal with? No. But we have so much of connection with a person who can kick a ball that, wallahi, when he cuts his hair in a certain way, we cut our hair in that way. Have you noticed? We have young singers and pop stars of today. When they wear a jacket the other way around, we all wear the jacket the other way around. When they cut their hair in a certain way, we all want to do that. When they wear a certain brand, we all want to do that. For as long as it does not contradict what you are taught by your maker, there is no harm in doing things that are upright, but there is harm in going beyond the limits. Whereby, did you ever know that we are taught by the Prophet sallallahu the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anil qaza. Do you know what that means? They said, the Prophet peace be upon him has prohibited us from qaza. What is qaza? For us, and a lot of the boys do this, to cut our hair different sizes. Whoa. So you've shaved part of your hair and you left the other part. The messenger, peace be upon him, the same one who's telling you that I'm going to be waiting on the pond. You know the pond known as al kawthar where the water will be on that day when we will all need to quench our thirst with a little bit of water. The messenger, peace be upon him, whose concern as per the hadith is ummati, ummati. It will be my ummah, my ummah. He will be waiting for us on the pond in order to intercede on our behalf. And do you know what? He says, I will recognize the members of my ummah. But when he said, don't cut your hair in a way that part is shaved and part is there. And we pitch up on that day walking, you know, with our baggy jeans halfway down our backsides. And we're coming and we, and we meet the Prophet, peace be upon him. He's waiting there on the howl. What do you expect? Is he going to say, hey, this is my man from my ummah. Come, 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 lad. May Allah forgive us. You might find a footballer on the other side saying, hey, come along, man. Let's go this way. May Allah forgive us, really. I have nothing against football, just to, you know, to make it clear. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's just an example. It's just an example. It could be anything else. But the point being raised is quite clear to say, look, if there are instructions from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to prove your love, you need to try and abide by those instructions. The companions may peace be upon them. Do you know what exactly they used to do? You know, many of us, we feel that if we were alive at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, we would have done this and we would have done that and we would have proven our love to him. The reality is we're not even proving it now. Those people, not only were they ready to give their lives to defend the messenger, but they gave their lives to defend what was right, to stand up for justice. And whenever an instruction came through, no matter what, they dropped immediately whatever they were asked to drop. Let me give you an example. 
I want you to put up your hand if you were insulted by the derogatory cartoons about Muhammad, peace be upon him. Everyone's hand is up. Why? Because we felt hurt, because we love the messenger, peace be upon him. Correct? Correct? Yes. So, subhanallah, the messenger, peace be upon him, if he were to tell you it is an insult to smoke a cigarette, what would you do? You would perhaps walk out of the door, smoke on the side. Sorry, mind you, we're in Singapore. You would need to go to a designated area and then smoke. Is that the love of the messenger? Listen to what the companions did. Once a man rushed around Medina Munawwara and he was saying something. What was he saying? And the people were sitting and drinking. That time drinking was permissible. You know, when I said this to one of the youngsters, he says, oh gosh, I hope I was alive at that time. That's the type of love we have. I hope I was alive at the time when drinking was okay, you know. May Allah forgive us. Is this the type of thinking? So he comes along, a man, an ordinary man comes along from amongst the Sahaba, obviously ordinary in their sense, but for us, they were not ordinary at all. But he says, Allah in al khamra qad hurrim. He says, behold, alcohol, intoxicants have been made prohibited. Intoxicants have been prohibited. Intoxicants have just been prohibited. What did they do? They say, ah, you're telling a lie, man. Wallahi, according to the narrations that have come to us, and we read the books of history, the books of Sirah, the companions, those who heard the statement from afar, they spat out what they had in their mouths and said, never again. Those who had bars or pubs or who used to sell, I'm calling them bars or pubs, but those who used to sell alcohol and had them in drums, a narration says they poured it all out to say we don't even want to make money through this it's prohibited that's it it's over it's gone when did they do that did they take a day a month to say you know i'm weak make dua for me oh messenger make dua for me i'm weak i'm i'm weak so a week later you got two bottles five bottles say i'm, I'm weak a lot of us engage in evil deeds and keep on saying dua dua please shake i'm weak i'm weak you know weak what excuse do you have we commit adultery and say we're weak. We go to gamble, we say we're weak. We smoke cigarettes, we say we're weak. We uh, drugs, we say we're weak. Everything else, we say we're weak. We, we cannot dress appropriately, we say we're weak. So we are so weak, everything is weak. Look at the companions. You really love the Prophet, peace be upon him. If something would hurt him, it should hurt you even more. The same way the cartoons hurt us. In fact, in a bigger way, we should be hurt if we insult the messenger. This is why, do you know what he says? He says, oh my people, I will be waiting for you on the Haub. I will be waiting for you on the day of judgment at that pond. And I will be recognizing you. You know what one narration says? La tukhzuni. Do not embarrass me. What's the embarrassment? What is the embarrassment? Who wants to embarrass the Prophet, peace be upon him? For us, we are hurt when someone makes a video, someone makes a cartoon, someone says something derogatory, someone says this and that. Wallahi, let me be honest with you. The Quran says, Allah says, we have protected you. Those who try to make a mockery of you will never reach you. We have protected you from all forms of mockery and those who mock. Those who worship gods besides Allah, those who've taken gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will soon know. So Allah says, we have protected your reputation. And this is why every time there is a video or a cartoon or some form of derogatory items against Muhammad, peace be upon him, more and more people turn to Islam. Have you noticed that? I'm telling you, more people, those who perhaps never even knew much about Islam begin to know. So Allah knows why these things happen. We still say it's wrong. We still say we should not insult others. As Muslims, the Quran has a law. 
The freedom that is mentioned in the Quran regarding freedom of speech has a limit in the Quran. Allah says the limit is do not insult others. That's the limit. So you can say what you want. You can speak. You can air your views. You can express your opinions. You can ask all sorts of questions, but stop short of insult. That's what the Quran says. وَلَا تَسُبُّ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّ اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Do not swear, mock, jeer, joke about those that are being called out besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or those who call out to gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as a result, they will do the same regarding Allah without knowledge. They will start mocking at you. So Allah says, hang on. These gods are false. These beliefs are false according to us. This is wrong. This is unacceptable. You do not insult, make a mockery of or joke about others and the way they worship. That's what the Quran says. The Jews can worship as they want. The Christians can worship as they want. The Hindus, the Buddhists, everyone else, they worship as they want. If you would like to discuss, no harm, but do not insult. No, not at all. Don't insult them and don't insult their gods. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us.